Everybody welcome. I think that we had started without being live. So, I'm Margaret Griffin, the director of the Cheltenham Center for the Arts. I'm very, very pleased to welcome you all to our first live opening of an art show here at the Art Center. This is Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Schultz, our first resident artist, and right over here is Arthur Haywood, our second intrepid artist of the day. I am so thrilled to be able to welcome you to the Art Center today. I'm sorry we don't have wine and cream puffs in hand, but I am very pleased to say that we are here and able to show the very beautiful work that these two artists have produced. So, uh, Rebecca, I'm just going to ask you to start uh, again, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, so, my name is Rebecca Schultz, and I'll see if I can give you more concise in a second. Um, I'm a landscape painter, I make abstract landscapes, so my work is inspired by a landscape, but it also kind of deconstructs with the parts from the original imagery. And I primarily am inspired by rock formations, and that's something that I've been doing for about three years. I um, originally was making work that came more from my subconscious but did kind of reflect like, imagery and forms that, um, that are found in the natural world. But in 2017, I went to artist residency in Iceland and was just blown away by the landscape there. It's, it's really uh, unlike anything else I've ever seen. And I started to sketch on the landscape there and was particularly interested in the rock formations and started to make work based on, at least was inspired by, it, and then used the landscape as a point of departure. So, um, I, at first, I was really just interested in, in rock formations aesthetically. The, the forms, the lines, the kind of compositions um, really kind of lend themselves to my aesthetic. But I very quickly started to learn more about the rocks and went back to my um, <coughs> ninth grade um, earth sciences and started doing some self study in geology, which I continued to do, and learning about geological time and when the rock formations that I've been painting evolved and what else was happening on the planet at that time. And it's really been a way for me to make sense of or try to cope with the kind of obviously ecological grief that I feel, my concern that I have about what humanity is doing to the planet. And it's when you look at a geologic time scale, humanity has been around this short, short period of time, of seconds in a 24 hour clock, but has had this huge um, outside of impact. And at the same time, these rock formations have been around for hundreds of millions, if not billions of years. So they've been around for a long time, and they're going to be around for a lot longer. So it, 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 that time scale has helped me kind of situate myself a little bit more in kind of the broader continuum of, of life on Earth, um, to get really deep about it. Hmm. So, um, so the, the work that the two series that I'm showing uh, that I made this year are both kind of new departures for me in terms of the way that I'm depicting rocks. And um, this first series, which is the, the four paintings you see here, these four large ones, um, this is the Wissenick and Schist Geology series. And um, when I moved to the Philadelphia area, in uh, 2016, I discovered who was in, um, which is an incredible place to, to hike and, and spend time. And as I came into the rocks, I realized that I had this incredible rock formation that was basically on you know, my backyard. Um, and so I spent a lot of time there and kind of research the, the geology of was in anxious, which was really fascinating in terms of how the rocks were formed. Um, you know, both sedimentary rocks and plate tectonics and metamorphic rocks and all of that, which I would be happy to explain at length. Um, but what I did with this series is I um, mixed two sets of imagery. They are both images of um, the Wissenhagen Schist, different formations in the Wissenhagen Schist, um, along with the geologic maps of the region. Um, and geologic maps, I, I think, are really beautiful. They're graphically really interesting. 
But the other thing that I noticed very quickly, which you see in all these paintings, and you can see it here, is that this, this section of the painting is where you see a lot of the map. And the diagonal that you see here, as well as the diagonal of the formation itself, I didn't really see this perspective very much at all. Um, and the reason why these maps are on the diagonal is because southeastern Pennsylvania is a bit on the diagonal, and the schist was formed due to colliding tectonic plates. So the geologic maps of the area have this strong diagonal, which integrates really well into the, the rock formations themselves. So really kind of, I would lay down the map first and then draw the rock on top of it and, and work back and forth between those two sets of imagery. Um, so that was a really exciting new way for me to work because I've not done that before. So you can kind of you can see it in all of these, this strong diagonal where you see the, the bits of the map, and then you also have the like the close-ups and kind of abstracted imagery of the rock formations. So in these, it's a little less tilted, but still, um, you know, again, these rock formations, in this one I've walked by millions of times and it is at this angle, so it's not all diagonals to begin with aesthetically. So um, so it was exciting and it was an exciting challenge to bring those two things together because I'm really interested in integrating more scientific data and scientific notation into my work. And that's something that I'm going to continue to do hopefully this summer. Um, I'm doing my first residency at a field station in New Hampshire, hopefully, um, and working with a geologist who looks at the interaction between the underlying rock and the ecosystems, um, particularly water and plant life sit on top of that rock, and so I'm excited to think about how that might translate into imagery, to that extra layer of like the impact that the underlying rock has on the ecosystems um, that it interacts with. So, so that is the first series. And then this series right here, these four paintings, um, this is what I call the stone structure series. And I started making these images, um, sketching these images when I went to Ireland in early 2019 for an artist residency. Um, I was really driving around Ireland. I was really struck by all of the stone structures that um, you see everywhere, and from these um, early circle forts that were made thousands of years ago to stone churches, to stone walls in the mountains that lead to absolutely nowhere. And so I really started to think about the relationship between human beings and rock and um, the, you know, the long history of humans building structures in stone, and particularly how in a lot of cases for these older structures that plant life and trees were kind of encroaching that in, in between the stones and kind of asserting themselves within the stones themselves. So that was really, um, really fascinating to me. And so these four paintings, two of them were made based on imagery from Southwest France, where I also went in the last year. I traveled a lot, thankfully, because I can't travel now. Um, so this one is from Southwestern France, and this third one is from Southwestern France. And then um, this, painting and this painting are from Ireland and this is the first one I made. It was actually inspired by a stone dovecoat, um, a circular structure with a little cavities, holes in the wall um, for birds to roost and it had a tree, you can't see it very well, but it had a tree growing right through the center of it. Um, and somebody from the residency took me um, on this abandoned property to see it and I was um, really blown away by it. So that was kind of the beginning um, of this whole series here. So, Rebecca, do you want to say a word about the fact that you started one of these paintings, weren't happy with it, and then... Yes. It? <laughs> so, um, so this painting over here, um, so this was um, in the residency, this is one of the first paintings that I made, and also one of the last paintings, because um, I started the, the Wisconsin Geology series with this painting, 
And I kept working on it and kept working on it, and this was not coming together. And I very rarely, rarely do this, because I usually just try to like wrestle something out of it. But it had just gotten too thick, so I literally pulled it off the stretcher and decided to start again. And I had planned on starting it, and planned on starting it, and things got in the way, and then the building had to close. Um, with a stay-at-home order, and so moved my work back into this, my home studio, and was going to start working on it, and then I got COVID. So, um, I, not, a, not a very serious case, but still I was very tired for probably six weeks, so I couldn't paint. So I managed to do this in the last two weeks, um, mm -hmm. and it was really cool kind of going back. I used the same imagery, but this one was completely different than the one that I um, did in the beginning because I had all of the information that I had gathered making the rest of the paintings in the series to bring into this. So it was it was cool to kind of circle back around with the same painting but make it differently in the end. So let's take a quick look in the hall. Sure. So we're gonna So um, in the hallway made um, for the larger paintings, um, so I start with a sketch of the rocks based on a photograph or from life, and then I often do these color studies to start to kind of deconstruct the, the rock formations and to start to pull out shape and pattern from them. So I did a whole series of these smaller studies. Um, some of them turned into larger paintings. Rebecca was just finishing up talking about her studies. Yes, um, so those are all my studies out there. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about one of them is that I was, when I was painting it, the color palette, I was looking at one of Arthur's paintings through the studio door, um, and so it was inspired by his color palette. We were just talking about how we were influenced each other in terms of color palette, which is cool. Um, so I just quickly want to say one more thing about my residency, which is that I originally planned to um, do another project related to this residency, which is tied to my interest in um, having people think more deeply about the relationship to the natural world and, and to take action. And um, it was drawing upon my experience in community-based theater, which I did for many years. I was going to do a participatory community performance um, set in High School Park, in Elkins Park, um, about um, individual kind of participants' um, relationship to the environment and what they wanted to do to help build a more sustainable world. Um, and with the shutdown and social distancing, I wasn't able to realize it the way I wanted to, but I created a virtual project that is on the Center for the Arts Facebook page. It's called My Eco Ritual, and there's a series of prompts that you can follow um, that ask you to respond with a photo and a few words and some hashtags. Um, and it really it takes you through kind of a sequence of thinking about the world that's related to the work of Joanna Macy, who some people might know. She's an ecologist and a philosopher. Um, so it's still up. I really encourage folks, you can do one prompt, you can do them all, whatever you would like, um, but I would love to see people's responses. And it's nice to have been able to do something, um, even though we weren't able to gather in person. So, um, so that's, that is my residency. Yeah. Rebecca, thank you so much. The work thank you. is just lovely, and I'm so glad to see it come together. Thank you. <laughs> Arthur, tell us about your work. Uh, my name is Arthur Hagelin. I've been a resident artist at the Shelby Center for the Arts since the fall, working on painting, showing stories from reading, coming to life. I have been a, a mural artist uh, with the Mural Arts Program and also created a mural for the Harrisburg Mural Festival. But with this series, I want to celebrate my love of sci fi and fantasy stories. These stories always allow me to see into another captivating world that was exciting for me. And with these paintings, I'm going to share the stories of the reference to Tolkien's Giant Eagles. Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite books. And um, with these paintings, I wanted to a painting on a large scale, but I wanted to feel like you could actually step into the scene. 
I was really inspired by a lot of the Trump Wood paintings that I had seen when I was in Rome, so just care about you know, those paintings in churches where a lot of figures could topple out of the paintings. And with these paintings, I wanted to make a scene uh, exciting and believable to excite kids about reading. Learning to read is important because it creates opportunities for people, and continuing to read expands one's horizons. I will be proposing to display these murals I created during the residency at different libraries after the show ends on June 12th. With this painting representing Tolkien's giant eagles, I have painted uh, numerous figures being picked up by this eagle as they're reading. As you can see, the books are falling out of her backpack, and the figure at the bottom is reaching to catch it, while another figure is holding on to her as they lift up into the sky. I painted the uh, I'm sorry, I painted this scene with a number of models that I referenced both from light and then also from photographs. So I did a numerous drawing study which are in the hallway, which we'll go to later. Of uh, Rebecca's daughter here for the portrait, and then use uh, another of my friends for this portrait, and then use other uh, mannequins for some of the figures as well too. And creating the scene of the bird from references from images and also imagination. And with this painting here, it's uh, mainly just painted at a large scale, so you feel like you can step into the piece. I've also created uh, murals uh, in before this residence, when this residency started, which also represents the same theme of stories coming to life. And with this scene, you can see the figures painted at a very large scale, so it really uh, is designed to appear that, that you can look up uh, at the scene and appear that the, the figure is floating above you. The original design for this piece was a mural proposal that I made for a library, the Parkway Central Library, uh, showing these figures rising out of the clouds of the reader's imaginations as they're holding their books. So I painted one uh, section of it to scale at five by five feet. And you can see the pharaohs rising out of her uh, clouds of imagination as she was reading. These works are painted on canvas and they are painted with uh, oil paint uh, so that they take, it took me a long time uh, to refine the paintings but the oil paint allowed me to manipulate the paint to make it smooth because it seems more smooth. As we go to the next painting here, this, rubber, this painting here shows, uh, was inspired by a sci-fi story that I was reading. I've been really into a lot of Brandon Sanderson books, so this book, Skyward, really got me excited about sci-fi stories. So I had this astronaut blasting through the wall. With this piece, I wanted to make a scene like the world of reading was coming into our world. Almost as, and I painted the scene in some of a tropical fashion with the big Figures reading on the ledge to make it appear that you could almost reach into the scene and grab their books. <laughs> and the tropoloy, uh, the tropoloy uh, technique also uh, is used to enhance this illusion of the astronaut blasting through the wall and it, to really show the excitement of sci-fi stories. For this painting, I also created a number of drawing studies, both from light and then also from photographs. I'm really fortunate to have been able to have models posed for to create these mural paintings. Uh, my sister's boyfriend models posed for this portrait, and then my other sister, Allie, posed for this portrait as well, too. So I've been fortunate to be able to work with models to create these, uh, these paintings. With, and, um, uh, so, so with these things that are all uh, painted with oil paint, I use a variety of textures and using paint more thickly at the front and the foreground and painting more thinly in the background. And uh, like I say, I made numerous drawing studies to create these works to um, make the process uh, more streamlined so that I didn't have to make everything up on the final canvas. So we'll just try to go into the hallway to see if it stays connected. But I'd like to show you some of the drawing studies I made that allowed me to create these paintings. We get disconnected as we did a few minutes ago, okay. and I will just come right back online. Okay. Go ahead. Let's try. Oh. Let's give it a try. So if we're still connected, I just want to. 
some of the drugs that I did for this painting. These are some of the drugs that I made for the uh, token painting, the giant eagle. So you can see I made numerous drawings of these. Some of these were drawn from mannequins uh, to uh, organize the linear boundaries and then also the shading uh, before I made the actual painting. This really facilitated the painting process to make it go a lot quicker. And some of these uh, drawings were referenced from photographs, but for these I worked from photographs while others so just before we cut off, I just wanted to uh, mention one thing that I was working on. Uh, I'm working on currently a mural for the Albums Park School Library, which I attended when I was in fifth and sixth grade. So I'm fortunate for that opportunity and also wanted to mention uh, a future record of fellowship that I received called the Harry Gilbert Scholarship to create murals in Paris uh, celebrating cultural appreciation and also uh, stories that have been students. Uh, this project may be affected by current safety conditions, uh, but it was scheduled to run right from the fall of 2020 to spring of 2021. So please stay tuned for updates, and I wanted to thank everybody at the Shopping Center for Arts for this opportunity, and everybody who helped make this residency possible. Thank you. And I am Margaret Griffin, and I am so thrilled to have welcomed you here today to the Cheltenham Center for the Arts. Very, very, very proud of both Arthur and Rebecca and the work that they've produced. I have to say, it's, it is my privilege and my uh, joy to be able to watch this work evolve over the course of a year, to be able to walk through the studios every day and see a little bit of change, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of breakthrough. Um, it's just been a, a great experience for us, and I hope as well for Rebecca and Arthur. And I know that both of them are getting ready to uh, go on to other residencies and to expand on this work. So all of this work will be posted on our Facebook page as well as uh, pricing information. If you're interested, uh, please do check out the uh, page on our website that talks about the um, uh, resident show. And if you are interested in any of the specific works, please email us directly at info at cheltenhamarts.org. Thank you very much and uh, Happy opening, residents. Congratulations.